course, let me say thank you very much to all of you for subscribing to this channel, for the likes, for comments, and all the things that you've done to support this channel. We are now like seven months old, and I really appreciate all your feedback and your support. Those of you who've not subscribed, it's time to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of this. Now, today, we are going to talk about how to engage customers. And I want to respond to a question. You know, last week was customer service week. And today, I feel inclined to respond to a question that came from one of the viewers. And this question was about customer service. Let me read the question so that we can start on the same page. Now, Alan asked this question. He said, I would like to know more on customer service from the point of view of the client, meaning effective customer service. Let me read the comment the way Alan put it. He says, in Kenya, for example, they put some pretty girl with an American accent to smile as they speak down on customers as a way to make you believe that they are upmarket or high end. I personally prefer places that come to my level. And uh, I would like to learn pointers on how to make sure I always communicate with my clients in an engaging way. Thank you, Alan. That is a great question. And I think just coming from customer service week, I think this is the right time to respond to that question. I agree with you that really customer service is not about putting someone out there just to create a fake conversation. Customer service is about building a relationship. It's about depth. But before we go to the specifics, let's just look at what happened during this last week, the customer service week, when every company was getting out there, trying to show how they care for customers. Some companies engaged in different ways. Some sent messages of inspiration and encouragement. Others sent messages to showcase their best service. Others even gave awards. Basically, what companies try to do is to show that they care about their customers. But let's look at what is a genuine way of building an engaging relationship with your client. First, build a relationship. When we talk about building a relationship, it's very different from the common transactional engagement that we see with many businesses. It's about the relationship not the one-off transaction. You cannot build a relationship casually and you cannot build a relationship over a short time. Even in our other personal relationships, we do not achieve a relationship over a short period of time. In actual fact, if you try to get a relationship over a short time, what you end up with is what we call vulnerable relationships of trust. So that you are assuming you have a relationship, but basically you are in vulnerable territory. So to build a relationship with a customer, you need to take time. You need to show that you know them. You need to keep engaging and talking over time. And this means you are not always talking about the things you need, what you want them to do. You are talking about things that are beneficial to the client. You are talking about a two-way relationship, a give and take, a mutually beneficial relationship, not about what you can get all the time. Now, to build a relationship, you have to think from a long-term perspective because the relationships that generate value and build customer loyalty and evangelism take time to build. And it's only with time that the customer will have the kind of confidence that you need for them to say, I'm in a relationship with this service. Or for the customer to feel that this is a relationship, it's no longer a transaction and to feel confident that they can come back again and again and again and expect the same treatment that they have become accustomed to. Number two, ask questions. One of the surest ways of building engagement is to ask questions. When you ask questions to a client, they feel that you are interested in their opinion. And you can ask many questions. You can ask them how they spend their day. You can ask them how your product fits in their lives. You can ask them about how you can add greater value, how you can serve them better. You can ask them many things. And by asking and then listening keenly to the feedback, you can gain insights which you can use to actually enhance your service to them and even to build greater relationship. 
Asking questions is a good way to create a strong, engaging conversation because you ask and they respond and you ask another question and you probe deeply and you continue engaging. And the next time you meet, you ask again, you ask other things and that kind of thing. That helps build engagement. You can ask many types of questions. You can ask how they feel about your product. You can ask how they use your product. You can ask how you can serve them better. You can even explore their media habits. You can find out how they spend their time. You can find out the media they use, their trusted sources of information and the like. The other day, I saw a communication by Vaseline and I instinctively knew that this communication is based on information they got from engaging their customers. They engage their customers and they must have listened keenly for them to be able to develop the kind of communication they've done. This is a communication that shows the many different ways that people use Vaseline for. And some are completely unusual, including how to mix it with, you know, drinking chocolate and the like to make a lip gloss and such stuff. This is information that you can only get from a customer, a person who has been using the product for long and has created different ways. So when you ask many, over time you will get many uses and then you can promote those uses for other customers to use. But the engagement is in the questioning. It's in the questioning, the answers, the feedback, the sharing, the talking together, the way good friends talk over time. Number three, explore your customer's journey. This is an attempt to understand the customer experience in engaging with your service. You want to know how the customer interacts with you in the different stages of obtaining your service. In my research business, where we do customer journey mapping for some clients, we look at the entire process from how you engage them at the beginning, how you identify prospects, how you start to talk to them, how you sell to them, the process they go through, how you interact during the process, the challenges they face, how you overcome any challenges that come along. That is from the beginning to the end of the service. And by looking at how this interaction goes on, you can find ways of how to enhance the service experience. And the biggest idea about customer journey mapping is actually to find the pain points that the customers have in engaging with your service and to find a way to remove them. A few months ago, I was speaking to the insurance industry. You know, people from sales to marketing to CEOs in the insurance industry. And I asked them one question to the huge hall with over 1,000 people. I asked them, what is the greatest point of pain in your customer service journey? And maybe I should ask this to all of you because you know, what's the biggest point of pain for the customer in the insurance industry? MC, can you give somebody a microphone? What is the greatest point of pain for yeah. customers in the insurance industry? What is the greatest pain where, here, wow. Great, yeah, the greatest pain point in Stop the talking. insurance, in the customer journey in insurance. Claims Thank and commission you. for insurance company. Thank you for the customer, it's claims because I think commissions are for someone else seated here, isn't it? Yeah, I agree. Now, and one of the interesting things is that the first person said claims. That is, they recognized that the service during claim processing is the greatest point of pain for the customer. I think you can identify with that. Many people who've had to make a claim at an insurance company feel that that is the area where there is the greatest friction. What do we call our customers? When we are talking to them, when you start the discussion, you call them a customer. When they pay, you call them a customer. When they sign up, you call them a customer. When they are renewing, you call them a customer. What do you call them when they make a claim? I need an answer from someone. Hi. Madam G. H. I'm behind here. Mm -hmm. Where is, you have an answer. Let's huh? hear the answer. Claimer. Claimant. She's saying claimant, did she right? Thank you. Thank you very much. We call them a claimant. That's the biggest 
problem in the customer service journey in insurance. Insurance is a promise. We tell the customer that we will deliver value for you. And then the day they need the risk management solution, we call them a claimant and we start treating them differently. I ask them, what do you call a customer when they make a claim? And again, one person answered that they call them claimant. And all the others agreed that that is a claimant. Then I asked them, how come when I come to buy insurance, you call me customer? Then you call me customer when you are providing me the service. You call me customer when you send me the policy document. You write, dear customer. You call me a customer or client along the way up to the point when I make a claim. And when I make a claim, you call me a new name. Now I become a claimant. Now we understood that truly this is the biggest point of pain. It stands by even losing the title customer or client. You start to be seen like someone else. So to address this, I suggested to them that they really need to drop the claimant term and start calling the customer who makes a claim a customer or a client. Just like they call them when they are selling to them, when they are winning them over, when they are cross-selling and giving them other products and services. Of course, they have to go beyond changing their name to removing other aspects of the pain process, like speed of processing, how you treat the customer during the processing, questions that you ask during the processing of claims, and that kind of thing. They have to find a way to remove those things that customers say cause them pain. And in your business, you can do the same. You can look at where the customers have a point of pain and you work to remove it. My ways for enhancing customer engagement are one, build a relationship. Two, ask questions. Three, explore the customer journey. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please send your comments and let me know what you think about this video. I really appreciate the comments that you have been sharing. And I hope, Alan, that I've answered your question. Thank you very much. We all need to elevate our mindsets at this time.